What's your favorite curse word? Uh, because it's a terrible thing to say and a wonderful thing to do. America should elect a great leader. And I recognize that I'm going to have to earn the votes of a lot of people who don't look and think exactly like I do. But that's exactly the kind of leadership that I had to exercise when I was a platoon commander in the Marines. Asking an incredibly diverse group of Americans, people from all over this country with different religious beliefs, different political beliefs, to literally risk their lives for what I was asking them to do. Uh, my worst habit, I drink a lot of milk. I think it's a great habit, but a lot of people think it's weird. I'm kind of set in my ways. You know, a lot of people ask me, what's a vote you took that you regret, that you did for political convenience? And the answer is I haven't had one yet. I've voted for things that have caught me a lot of heat, especially when I vote for Republican amendments because, God forbid, they're actually good ideas. Every once in a while, the Republicans have a good idea. And sometimes the party just says, no, 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 you just got to vote with the Democrats because it's a Republican amendment but I always try to vote on the principle of the bill. It wasn't just about Pelosi, it was about the top three leaders in the party who have been in power for a combined almost 100 years. And I think it's time for a new generation of leadership in our politics, and that's not something I just say, it's something I've fought for ever since I took on an 18-year incumbent to get elected myself. And as a result of having that democratic debate in the House about who our next leader should be, we got the Voting Rights Subcommittee, the Climate Change Subcommittee, it made sure that this historic new generation of House members, the most diverse class of freshmen we've ever had in our history, will actually get a voice in the future of our politics. Now Pelosi is doing a great job of standing up to Trump, and I give her all the credit in the world for that. But I do disagree with her when it comes to impeachment, because I think that regardless of the politics, we've got to uphold our duty under the Constitution. The President violated the law. Well, I don't know if this is going to be popular or not, but my money is on Downton Abbey being the movie of the year. Are you quite finished? I have. Good. It would be getting money out of politics. I think we'd be making much better decisions about everything in government if people just voted on their conscience rather than on their politics, and if our politics wasn't influenced by money. I served on a small team of Marines that had an odd job. We reported directly to the top general in Iraq, General Petraeus at the time. But we were always out in the field, living and working with Iraqis and American Special Forces. And my partner on the team, co-equal teammate, was a woman. A lot of people assumed that we couldn't be out there alone because she wouldn't know what to do. And that was dead wrong. I had to stand up for her in front of a lot of senior military officials but I was proud to do it because she's one of the best Marines that I've ever met. Oh my gosh, I don't know. Matthew McConaughey, I don't know. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. <laughs> the first bill I passed in Congress is called the Faster Care for Veterans Act, and it simply helps veterans get appointments at the VA more quickly. Just a few months ago, I ran into an army soldier down in South Carolina who I'd never met before, but he came up to me and said, thank you for doing that because it's made a difference in my life. I'm a huge believer in the afternoon nap. Uh, like every time I vote for something that the party leadership says I shouldn't, <laughs> it happens a lot. I support a public option exactly like President Obama envisioned because I think a single-payer system like Medicare for All, although hopefully a more modern version of Medicare since it was designed in 1963, should compete against private health care plans and may the best one win. And I say that as the only candidate in this race who actually receives single-payer health care. 
because I made a commitment to continue going to the VA even when I was elected to Congress. I think people see the, the suit that I always wear on TV and figure that I'm a pretty uptight guy or something and not very relaxed. And um, if you saw me at home hanging out with my wife and daughter and cooking on the grill in the backyard, it's a very different picture of Seth. Uh, do I have to admit this? A whole new world. I think the most important question in this race is not just how you're going to beat Donald Trump, but how you're going to bring this country together. I've never seen America more divided in my lifetime. And there are a lot of things that this election is about. There are a lot of things that Democrats want to do, like addressing the climate, the economy, our health care. But we're not going to be able to do any of that if we can't bring this country together. Okay, that was your question for the other candidates. Here's a question from another candidate. Governor Jay Inslee is asking everyone, what's an issue that you're willing to stand up for, even if it costs you your seat? Well, I stand up for a lot of issues that might cost me my seat. But certainly, the most profound question that faces Congress, when we should or should not go to war, is something that I would happily end my political career on making the right decision. I met Alyssa Milano in Iraq in 2003. In the middle of the desert, she came to do a USO tour, and um, not a place you expect to run into Alyssa Milano. Uh, I do have my phone handy to check. Let's see. Give me the other one. <laughs> no, I think it's less. I don't know. <laughs> you were wondering if I had a, a second cell phone? Oh my gosh, I should compare. 31 minutes per day. Now you're gonna make me check the other one? Two hours, 42 minutes per day. My daughter, Emmy, is only seven months old, but I cannot, I just cannot understand how much I am in love with someone I only met seven months ago. I mean, it's just, I think about her all day, every day, and I miss her dearly every minute I'm away from home. More 2020 candidates are coming your way. Drop us a comment below and let us know what you'd like to ask them. You can also check out more presidential contenders in our full 20 questions for 2020 playlist. And be sure to subscribe to Now This so you don't miss an episode. Thanks for watching.